Hey everyone, um, thank you for tuning in. Um, I want to take you along the journey Yah has been taking me on today. Every day is just an amazing journey of revelation. And um, so today we, we pretty much confirmed Ron Wyatt's discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, it's confirmed. Um, he doesn't get enough credit as he deserves. And I'm sure Yah will reward him in the resurrection. And but I always felt like, you know, I've done a lot of a lot of articles on my website or quite a number of them um, honoring his work and and adding on to his work, finding things that verifying things that he didn't even believe, but still confirming his work. Um, so, you know, we should rightfully honor our brother. Um, so we confirm that his finding of the Ark of the Covenant is real. Um, exactly as depicted in that rare text, The Lives of the Prophets. And there are prophecies for the Ark of the Covenant to um, come out in the last days. And we need to pay attention to that. So the thing... I've just realized on my on my little walk today, I'm under so much heavy attack. The the slightest thing is taking me all day, and I literally I got up, I ate breakfast, and I slept for another like three four hours. Um. Anyway, I really want to share. This is not new information, but for me, I'm able to confirm it in my understanding. The Temple Mount in Israel that everyone's fighting over is not the real Temple Mount. That's what um, I just realized tonight on my walk. And I'm going to show you why. Um, that's not the real Temple Mount. The real Temple Mount is at Golgotha, where Christ was crucified. The place of the skull, which generally is a bus depot in modern Israel. Um, I want... I'm, at the end of this video, I'm going to show some slides from the Book of the Cave of Treasures that I just happened to listen to on my walk tonight. And it just pieced everything together. Uh, the Book of the Cave of Treasures <coughs> blatantly... <coughs> the Book of the Cave of Treasures blatantly tells that Abraham took up Isaac as... was willingly to take up Isaac as a sacrifice at Golgotha. Golgotha is the center of the earth. That's where Adam was buried. Um, that's where Christ was crucified. Um, that's where the temple will be built. Um, that's the center of the earth. And on the flat earth, it's very interesting. We need to figure that out. I don't know how that works. But there's astounding insight. How that area kind of uh, represents a cross. And the tree of life, a tree, you know, cursed is the man that hangs on a tree. How does that refer to the cross? Because that resembles the tree of life. So cursed is the man, cursed is the man that hangs on the tree of life. So that's what that, um, that's what that text means. Uh, that's what those verses mean. So in this video, I'm going to show you some slides from the book of the cave of treasures, giving the revelation on Golgotha. Um... I was just asking myself to the, tonight, well, why is it a skull? There has to be a reason for that. Uh, the Cave of Treasures covers that. And yeah, man, this stuff is real. Yah's works are infinite. Um, you cannot... It's impossible to search all of his works God out. God is perfect and infinite. And his works are just so amazing. So, this leaves another question. Um... Some stuff I found that I was never able to publish because I never finished my book on how Abraham's sacrifice of Isaac symbolizes the crucifixion of Christ. But now that I realize that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem is not the real Temple Mount, Golgotha is, um, I have to remake my slide. But um, anyway, the point I'm trying to get at, I will show the slide in this video. Is that when you realize Christ's crucifixion is a sim symbolism of a burnt offering. 
just like Isaac was meant to be a burnt offering, okay? Our bodies, to, we're supposed to be a living sacrifice in this life, okay? And we're supposed to present ourselves as a burnt offering, okay? So, if this is true, we should be looking at the requirements for a burnt offering in the book of Leviticus, which is chapter 1, and look for Jesus. So, I want to challenge you guys to look in the book of Levi Leviticus chapter 1 and look for Jesus. Um, you'll be pretty amazed. Um, I wrote about this, but I never finished it. Anyway, the slide that I made, Jesus amazingly fulfills Leviticus 1.11a. And I will show you on that slide. But that slide needs to be updated because that Temple Mount is not the alt. That Temple Mount is not the real Temple Mount, but it's interesting what is the Temple Mount in modern day Jerusalem that everyone's fighting over. According to the Bible, it's an altar. Is it a pagan altar? I don't know. I don't know. But it is not the altar that um, Abraham took up Isaac for a sacrifice. It's not. That's where, that's where Golgotha is. And Golgotha is a skull because the cross crushes the head of the serpent. And that's where, you know, you'll read about it in the Book of Cave of Treasures. And you know what? Look at the current pictures of Golgotha. Due to erosion, that skull is crushed. Okay? God is perfect. God is amazing. I know I'm rambling here. So the question is, I have to look this up when I go home. I have to start researching what really is that place that the Temple Mount is in Jerusalem. What's the deal with that place? According to the scriptures, it is an altar. It must be a pagan altar. So, I don't know. Very interesting. Um, I had to figure that out. Um, I just want to add that um, when you read these slides in the Book of Cave of Treasures, they're going to be at the end of this video. Think about the prophetic implications Okay, do you understand how these characters in the Bible are shades of Messiah? Think about it. Let's think about what we just uncovered today. Uh, confirming Ron Wyatt's um, discovery of the Ark of the Covenant. Okay, um, there's a reason why the Ark of the Covenant was stored and will be found and will be resurrected in the last time between where Moses and Aaron were buried. Why? Because Moses and Aaron, Aaron is a shade of Messiah and Moses is a shade of the servant. Okay? These are prophetic implications and it's very interesting how the Ark of the Covenant was stored between their their bodies. Um, this this is how Yah works. His, his works are amazing and are infinite. And yes, he does do these things. Um, it's infinite wisdom, infinite understanding. Okay? So when you look at these slides in the Book of Cave of Treasures, I want you to think about that stuff as well. Why, why did God want Adam's body to be buried where Christ would be crucified? We all know why. And it tells us in the Book of the Cave of Treasures. It's amazing. So, okay guys. Um...